swing and a high drive in the center field. Hits at the wall. It is gone. Passes does it again. Again. It's gone. It's into the bullpen. This game is tied. This game is tied. He swings and rips one to center field. It's high. It's deep. It's back. It's gone. Sale winds. He fires. Swing and a miss. Strike three. It's over. The Red Sox. Hey, oh, welcome back to Play Testy. It is episode 92. This is the official podcast of Daddy Raffy times two. We got two of them on this team, two Daddy Raffies, also known as the official Red Sox podcast at WEI. Remember, hit that subscribe button. If you're on Apple, Odyssey app, or Spotify, hit the subscribe button and rate five stars. Also, find us on YouTube on WEI's page. We've got a Play Testy playlist. Hit the thumbs up on those videos and follow us on the socials at Play Testy on both Twitter and Instagram. Here with Sammy. Here with Pat, Sox are 49 and 40, game and a half up on Kansas City for the third wild card spot. They are firmly right now. I think anytime you're more than one game, you are firmly in a playoff spot. They're also three and a half up on the red hot Astros. They're five and a half up on the Rays. They're one and a half back of the Twins for the second wild card spot. And with their win over the Yankees on Sunday night, they are four and a half back of the Yankees for the first wild card spot. The Yankees obviously are ice cold. I mean, it's hard to be upset about what you're seeing. We haven't been upset about a series in God knows how long. It feels like the last time we left the series less than, or I don't know, like we weren't satisfied after the Padres series, but like when was the last time we were like legitimately concerned about, about like we've had individual player concerns, but team concerns, like it might be since the White Sox series. And even that was just a split. I know it's the White Sox, but it's been a long time since that. Like we went to the Savannah Bananas game that night, and pretty much since that, it's it's been I don't want to say smooth sailing, but they've played great baseball. And this was an awesome, awesome, awesome series against the Yankees. Two kind of signature feeling games. Obviously, started off by the Masataka Yoshida game tying home run and Sidon Rafaela game winning home run in the first game, and capped off by the Raffi brothers just dominating the Yankees and daddying them into oblivion in the third game. I mean, I just, I feel so good about this right now. Like, I don't even know what to say. Yeah, man, it feels good to feel good. That was one of those series. That one felt like it meant something. They've been playing good baseball lately, and that's great. But this series, Yankees on the road, it's your second time seeing them too. Beat Luis Heal, who everyone's talking about as the rookie of the year. Garrett Cole didn't look too great, though the Red Sox lost that game. Just so many good things to take away. Cutter Crawford, Rafi, Yoshida, we could go on and on and on. Felt like they won a big series. And I, when was the last time we felt like they won a big series? I I have no idea, but it feels good. A big series. I mean, they've had a couple of them. Like the Yankees won a, a couple of series ago. That felt like winning a, a big series. Uh, are you saying because their position in the standings didn't? Yeah, like, yeah it's like they were fighting they for some point. point? It's like they're fighting for something. Right now, I don't I don't feel like they're fighting for a playoff spot. I'm they're fighting to to be buyers at the trade deadline, at least in my head. So every win feels big as we head closer to what is it? Is it July 31st or August 1st? They've changed it. Whatever. The trade deadline, which is in about three and a half weeks, every win is big. So big series. There you go. I have a question for you, for you guys. We we've had if <laughs> it's funny. We have had, I feel like this conversation three or four times, maybe three times at this point about the game of the year was Masataka Yoshida tying the game with a two run homer when the Red Sox were down to their final strike. OB talking on the broadcast about how Yoshida hadn't homered since April 20th and he puts one in the seats. And this was not a cheapo Yankee Stadium homer. It was over the cheapo Yankee Stadium wall, but it was a blast. Mm-hmm. Dude took Clay Holmes to the moon, sucked the soul out of the out of Yankee Stadium. And then the very next inning, Sedan Rafaela begins his journey to be the next daddy of Yankee Stadium in the 10th inning with a blast to center. Was Pat, was this the game of the year? Or or is it was it the Yankee game in the last series, or was it the Blue Jay game where they were down by four in the eighth inning? Which which what is the game of the year right now? No, I think I think you have to go with Friday night. I feel like you have to. Because this was a big series. The Yankees are on a giant skid. You lose this series, they win their first series in God knows how long, probably six months. 
So they start to feel good. You lost to the Yankee. Like it, it was a big series. There was major implications there. You're getting closer to the deadline. And I think just within the context, it's hard to say Friday night's not the game of the year so far. That's kind of where my head's at too. I mm-hmm. it's crazy. I feel I feel like I sound like an idiot that keeps just like that has recency bias because I keep picking a new game of the year, but the team keeps giving me a game of the year. No, you, you're right. There have been, this is a fun team. Middlebrooks talked about it on the broadcast. They're not the greatest team of all time, but they're really fun. And with that, we've had a lot of games that felt like, oh, that was the game of the year. You mentioned a few of them. One that comes to mind for me is the Toronto one where they had the four run comeback. That said, that Yoshida swing was the most impactful swing of the entire season. That was, I mean, you're down to your last strike of the game and you're facing Clay Holmes and say what you want about Clay Holmes. That guy is nasty. He gets a lot of crap from Yankees fans because he blows a save here and there like every closer does. He's still an all-star closer with some of the most ridiculous stuff that you're ever going to see. So, um, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll give you guys a spoiler. I'm picking Yoshida as my series MVP. I think that you have to pick him. There was no bigger moment this year than that single moment. He made it happen. Sorry, I know I know it's gonna be an unpopular opinion, but that that moment was so big. <laughs> it's huge. It, I I'll tell you, I did radio with Brad Foe the very next morning, and there was no there was no possible way I could have gone into that session feeling better. And I'm so not a morning person. I'm really not. I I I just I don't like waking up early, but I, I couldn't wait to get to the station to talk about the Red Sox, to talk about that game, to talk about where the team was at because they just keep climbing. Like I know they, they gained one game on the Yankees during the series, but it, it, you, you just feel it. They're four and a half back of them. And you just, the momentum, it, you just feel them. You feel it coming. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I do. I, I I'm excited for the day that the Red Sox pass the Yankees in the standings at some Ooh, point. Wow. Wow, it's gonna that's, happen. that's cocky. How do you think Yankees fans are feeling right now? We're, we're, we have a lot of Yankees fans, friends. You know, we don't we don't like the Yankees, but we're friends with some of those fans. How do you think our guys are feeling? I'll, I'll compare it to something. I do you remember that like the very the late part of the summer in 2021 where the Red Sox kind of tail spun a little bit and yes. it kind of looked like they were going to miss the playoffs. That's that's got to be the way the Yankees fans feel right now. Because I don't want to say it's twenty. It's I don't want to say twenty eleven because it's not like that dire. Like twenty twenty one, we felt bad, but it, it never, it didn't get dire until like the last week of the season. I'm not talking about then. I'm talking tough. about like the middle of the summer. It's tough for us though because this is kind of a weird situation for the Yankees. This is the third year in a row, third year in a row that they've started on fire. And everyone is saying, this is the Yankees team that's going to win. Judge is amazing. Stanton looks better. Garrett Cole, blah, blah, blah. And regressed her Cortez. And it's the third time that they've kind of tailspun. Like, we can't we can't relate to this. We've seen bad Red Sox teams. But this is a weird, weird trend with the Yankees. And, you know, this isn't a Yankee show. So we don't have to talk about it much more. But I just, I can't imagine what that feels like. It's like the same old story for them. Yeah, I, it really is. And I, I do want to... I don't know, quickly gloss over game two because like it, it's frustrating to me that the Devers home run off Cole came in game two because I couldn't have been more excited after a home run than I was after that. And I know it, it's crazy saying that the day after Rafael and Yoshida hit those two home runs, but anytime Devers gets to Cole, which feels like every time they face off, it, it just gets me going. Obviously, it came right after the Verdugo pimp job homer which has been talked about at length. Oh my God, do I have Yankee fans going at me on Twitter for shitting on Verdugo for that response to the homer. To like, Whatever, just to me, it, it's it's about you can pimp a homer if you're good. Rafi can pimp a homer. For Doogie, who's been one of the worst hitters in baseball for a month, he can't pimp a homer. Yo, that's, how that's, about, that's how about Will Middlebrooks? Friend of the program, Will Middlebrooks, his comment. Pat, I know you love that. Will Middlebrooks said like, oh, Verdugo's happy. It's the first hard hit ball he's had in a month or something like that. That was great. A nice little subtle, you know, under the radar jab. It's not one of those overt, like, this guy is a clown. Look at him. He's like, no, look, he's excited. It's the first time he's hit a ball hard in a month. Good for him. And then you also had Wink. Wink was saying, oh, he's used to ride the roller coaster. I'm like, oh, they hate him. They hate what him does that so mean? much. It's sad. Just up and down. He's just used to going up and down. He's on oh, a high right Oh, okay. Up and down. He, okay. That, he that's, rides the wave. Yeah. But hey, if you're Raphael Devers, 
you can pimp a home run. You guys want to hear his numbers versus Garrett Cole after that game? Oh, oh, I do. Please give me what you got. He's 13 for 39, (laughs) which is good for 333 average with eight home runs and 18 RBIs in 43 plate appearances. Nobody else has more than five home runs off of Garrett Cole. Rafael Devers has eight. Okay. I saw the five thing. I couldn't find anyone with more than four. Mm, Who has? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know who it is. I looked it up on stat muse though. So sometimes I don't know. I stat muse sometimes can, can be whatever, but like I saw like Lucas Duda and like Matt Carpenter both have four. It's like basically since he's gotten really good, no one's even touched him except for Affy. Yeah. He's also got four walks too. So like Cole doesn't walk many guys at all. It's just a complete domination. I are uh, Josie McFly. Who's a Yankees blogger, YouTuber, just Yankees content. He on his stream had a great reaction. Just started screaming at Garrett Cole. Like, dude, just walk the guy. He owns you. I know you're Garrett Cole. Cy Young. Great. But walk Raphael Devers. You can't get this guy. Just stop. <laughs> I, I have a hard time disagreeing. Honestly, it's, it's almost no, they should walk him. If they walked him every time he came up to the plate in the third game, who knows how that game goes? Just walk yeah. him. It's not even just Garrett Cole. It's the whole team. Walk the guy. Oh, isn't it so good to be on the other side of this? Yeah, we've had like Rowdy Telez and stupid oh. Reds. Oh, Cal Raleigh. We've had a bunch of dumb socks killers. And like Rafi's the opposite of like one of the dumbos who, who gets a team. Like he's actually great and he's getting a team, but. Yeah, the other thing about about this game, though, I I just I never and I'm sorry to all the people who are from there or like it or whatever. I never want to hear the word Cahasset again in my life. I'm done with it. I I I cannot. I hate it. I'm sorry. Like if you I don't know Cahasset High School. Is that a thing? If you go like, I'm sorry. I just I will not hear that word again. And it has nothing to do with the fact that Ben Rice hit three home runs in the second game. Obviously, like. He owned the second game, and I'm sure it felt great. Like he's got siblings that are Red Sox fans, and and whatnot. He grew up a Yankee fan, whatever. I heard the story about Ben Rice 10, 15 too many times. I Cahasset, no, it's out. I I might mute the word on Twitter. I, actually, I don't mute any word on Twitter. Maybe I'll make Cahasset the first word that I mute on Twitter because I'm just I'm done with it. I can't I can't hear that guy's story again. I can't. Dude, when Cohasset. I when I. Cohasset's down my way. And let me tell you one thing. Cohasset is the most yuppie town in Massachusetts. <laughs> oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. you're correct in saying fuck Cohasset. Um, Light it up on fire, baby. Get they, it they, out. Were talking, they were talking about like, oh, yeah, he, he grew up in the Boston area, but he had a Jeter poster growing up. That's what all like the losers do here. Like you get bullied and then you like, I'm going to rebel and have a Jeter poster. So that just made me think he was a dork. He gives off a... What I texted you guys, he gives off hall monitor vibes. Like he was the hall monitor in middle school. And if you went to the bathroom, he'd be like, you have to show me your hall pass. I'm Ben Rice. I actually like the Yankees, even though I grew up in Massachusetts. Do you know they have 27 rings? Uh, That's Ben Rice. (laughs) (laughs) I'm Ben Rice. I'm Ben Rice, and I'm the hall monitor, and I like the New York Yankees. You probably like the Red Sox, but not me. No, no. Go Yankees, pinstripes. I'm different. I'm Ben Rice. I'm Ben Rice. I'm different. I have no vibes. He couldn't have less vibes. No vibes. Like, not good or bad. Just nothing. They have Aaron fucking Judge, Giancarlo Stanton, Juan Soto. They have guys with legitimate aura on that team, and, like, they have monstrosities of human beings. And then there's just Ben fucking Rice. You know what ben it is? Rice. It might it might not even be all his fault. It's the friggin' no beard, no hair thing. That and if you're like a, a regular looking Joe, like Ben Rice, you have no vibe of any kind, no aura. We won't even get into aura. He's What's wrong with looking like me, Sammy? Oh no, you're beautiful. You look like uh you, you look like an eighties woman. I'm above guy. average looking Joe. Joe, yeah, you have very, a beard. Oh, because you said Joe. Oh, okay, I get it. Oh, average. Oh, crap. I didn't even know. I was that like, was, "What are you talking about?" You got I missed, like a. I missed the joke. You got a I bunch, of, you got a bunch Joe, of. Joe, you have you have you have women all over you all the time. Don't even. You're you're a hot commodity. So you're not Ben Rice. But anyway, Ben Rice, no aura <laughs> at all because the Yankees have that stupid rule from 1912 back when they were relevant. And to be honest with you, you you get the guys like Austin Wells who like half semi try to bypass it by growing the the big bushy mustache. No, you don't have any aura either. You look like a a motorcycle guy from like the 1970s. Like I I 
I thought Wells as a catcher, I think he pulls it off. I, I don't like him, but like the look. Ugh, I hate who I hate the uh, mustache. Sal Fasano vibes. Remember him? You know, <laughs> who does not pull off the mustache? Trent Grissom. Guy looks 50. Oh, yeah, dude. he looked bad. He, he looks so old. What does he look like? He fucking sucks, man. He's oh so my bad. god. He he looks like he doesn't want to play baseball, that guy. He pulled the foul ball in the eighth off of Slayton in the third game, and he hit it really hard. I was like, oh, my God, that might be the best thing I've ever seen him do. It was a foul ball. Yeah, John Boy was ripping him to shreds on Twitter. That was a good, that's a good one to look at. So it's not like Trent Grisham. Before we pivot, doesn't Rice kind of give you like Greg Bird vibes? Like he's just a guy. Yes, yeah. it's it's all of those stupid schmucks that come up through their system and are just like like tall white dudes with like no fun hair and obviously no facial hair and they're <laughs> no they're so fun. young and like <laughs> they have they have no vibe. I'm you no of, fun hair loser. Like you no fun hair, no beard having bitch. <laughs> like look at our guys. Like look at Willie. Willie's ice cold. Yeah, Thick Willie's ice example. cold. But he's got a sick kind of long hair mohawk, whatever that is, a mohawk thing that looks like he's like a faux hell's hawk? angel. Yeah. Is that I'm what looking. a faux hawk is? What's a faux no. hawk? No. I don't know. No, faux hawk is like a faux mohawk. Like when you like. What is faux? Fake. Fake. Uh, faux. Fresh. F E A U X. So it's, like, it's like a mohawk that's not like, like directly in the air. I honestly like, don't know. know. And then look at our sweet little teddy bear, Sadon. Yeah, Fohawk. It is, it is kind of a... Eh, kind of. It's more of a Mohawk than a Fohawk. It, 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 the Fohawk looks just like you get a fade and then a little flip up. I, can you can you imagine Sedan playing on the Yankees? Like the swag that he has just would not work on the Yankees. Yeah, that's a Fohawk. Like Chris right Bryant. There. Oh, honestly, yeah, Chris Bryant. Yes. Yeah, honestly, to, to, you have to be like uh, Soto. If you're gonna have the the no beard, no hair, you gotta be like scary looking mean mug like Soto. Like he pulls it off. I hate to say it, but Ben Rice, Trent Grisham, nah, you're not Juan Soto. But see, that's why the Red Sox are much cooler. We got guys like Jared Saltalamacchia with friggin' perms down to his shoulder. You completely bald, but with a beard that flies. Like the history of Red Sox hair is incredible. Manny, your boy. Yeah, how many like Pedro, Ben Rice Curry looking girl? guys? Like how many? Think about. The, like Ben Rice, and think about how many guys like that the Red Sox have had. Bellhorn. They, Nava? Yeah, Daniel Nava might be. Nava. They, Daniel Nava is definitely one. That's a good LeVarnway? example. Of that. Yeah, yeah, LaVarnway. You got to really dig deep. But see, the aura matchup is not even close between the Red Sox and the Yankees. Red Sox oh. seem like the way more fun team. Like Fenway Park is wacky. We got crazy hair. It's Boston. And then New York is like, we are the Yankees. We earn our pants stripes. You can't. Cut your hair. I don't like your beard. I want to see your smooth Yankee skin. Like it's just weird. <laughs> God. All right. Let let's do game three here. Unbelievable. Like it's before we get to Devers because I want I want to start with the pitching thing because it you watch the ESPN you watch the Sunday night broadcast and all they're doing is. They're doing dirty things to Luis Hill. They glazing. are just, they're glazing Luis Hill. They are loving them some Luis Hill. And to be fair, he looked great. His stuff was filthy. He looked like he was all the way back after three horrendous starts. So, like, give Luis Hill credit. But it was just, it was frustrating because they didn't really talk that much about Cutter, who had like five, four or five straight sub 10 pitch innings, was efficient beyond belief, didn't even throw 70 pitches tonight through six innings. Gordo, much, like did he throw I, I, 68 I, pitches overall through seven? Something like that. Let me pull His up let me pull up the number. But before you get that, Gordo, it, I would have to imagine that ESPN, they have a that was it, right. ESPN was the broadcast. Yeah. Yeah. ESPN probably has a production meeting. They probably have a lot of numbers to back up that the Yankees are by far the most popular team in Major League Baseball globally and nationally. So they're like, okay, we really have to sell this kid, Luis Heel, who has a chance to be rookie of the year. He's nasty. He's been ice cold. But if he starts figuring out against Boston, oh, my God, we can sell this. Meanwhile, you have Cutter Crawford, who is a not a top prospect at any point of his career, kind of, you know, 
under the radar guy comes up. He's been nasty. He's being just as dominant as Luis Heal, even better in the end. That's just not as appealing to ESPN and their audience for the most part. They're not catering to Boston. They're catering to a national audience, uh, conceivably. So that's why I think they're glazing all over Luis Heal the entire game. It makes sense from a from a business standpoint, but God damn, I hate listening to it as a Red Sox fan. And and Luis Heal outdueled by Cutter Crawford. It was sixty eight pitches. Seven innings on 68 pitches, four hits, no runs, didn't walk a batter, four strikeouts. So huge. You huge. look at and Luis Hill, look- you watch the pitches, and, and Luis Hill looks more dominant when he throws the ball at 98, that straight line fastball right to the bottom of the zone. It looks great, but guess what? Cutter out dueled him. And if you listen to just the broadcast, he wouldn't have known it. Yeah. I um yeah, I agree. You wouldn't know that by listening to the broadcast. Uh yeah, that was that was a great game. That's kind of my personal favorite kind of baseball game. I like the low scoring ones where every run feels like it's it's huge. So when Devers hits a solo home run in the first inning of a game, I'm like, all right, great, good start, one nothing. But in that situation, late in the game, seventh inning, Luis Heels dealing. Everyone was saying he's probably done for the night, but Aaron Boone was like, no, get back out there. Rafael Devers swings, misses the ball, but wait, he's the strongest man on the planet, so it flies out for a home run. I love when he hits accidental home runs like that. It's the funniest thing ever. That's how good he is. Left Luis heel in just a little bit too long. Just a little bit. Just a little yeah. bit. It felt like that last out in the sixth was it for him. You know what's bizarre? Is that very clearly Boone made a mistake by keeping him in. Everyone was saying take him out. Then Cutter Crawford pitches and Every Red Sox fan I know is like, why would you not keep him in? Why would you not keep him in? And I'm like, did you just see what they did and it didn't work? Stop. Let him let him rest. Also, he needs to save his arm. We saw what happened to him last year. He got tired. So 68 pitches, caught like half a night in terms of pitch total. Fantastic. So uh, great job by Cora pulling the string on that. And just great job by Cutter Crawford. That was a pleasure to watch. Dude, thought it was a perfectly was managed game by Cora. When was the last time you guys can remember a, p- a pitcher being that efficient? I mean, you had Tanner's sub hundred pitch complete game, but I mean, he was yeah. through what was it five innings on like forty one pitches, forty three yeah. pitches, something like that, and then he was through six on fifty four. That's absurd. I think you can That's almost, crazy. You can almost tell early on when Cutter has the good fastball because it looks like it's like gliding almost. It, he spins yep. it so well when he's really spinning it, you can tell. And it looked, granted, I was out to dinner, so I was kind of peeking down, watching on my phone, but it looked early on like he was really spinning it and it was getting that ride that he really uh, feeds off of. And goddamn, man. And the split. Was, yeah, the, the split splitter too. was crazy tonight. Yeah, and it looks like it the looks like the fastball halfway through and, and then, then it just drops off the, balls off the table. Oh, my uh-huh. God. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah. He's the best. He's the best. We love Cutter. Okeechobee. So, uh, also... I was getting a kick out of Luis Heels ha- tattoo, which is on his throat across his Adam's apple says, God bless me. Great idea. I was just imagining all of the new England dads seeing that for the first time and being like, what the hell is he thinking? This asshole has God bless me on his throat. I can't stand the Yankees. Of course. Like that. I just, there had to have been a thousand dads all across new England. Just freaking out at his throat tattoo, and I honestly don't blame them. That is a Luis Heel. That's a that's throat that's goat. An, that's an, <laughs> 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 throat goat. Yeah, he. That's an absurd tattoo to get. He should. Uh, I don't know why Red Sox fans aren't like tattooing like the score and stuff with Photoshop onto his. Throat. Oh, you maybe if they that. rocked him. That's a good if idea. They, if, if Gil Heel Gil, if he gave Heel. up like five runs over four innings, you could photoshop his pitching line over his throat Ugh, all right throat. you guys ready for a, a raffy stat here yeah all right in red Sox history obviously devers home run in the seventh was a go-ahead home run at yankee stadium here are mm-hmm. the most go-ahead home runs at yankee stadium in red Sox history raffy devers leads all red Sox players all time with 11 jim rice hmm. has 10 david ortiz has nine ted williams has eight all right raffy is literally my age he is one month older than me, and he has the most home runs at Yankee Stadium of all time. He's 27. That's ridiculous. And it wasn't even the first one he hit. Hits 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 a home run to go ahead in the seventh. Cutter gets through the seventh, which felt massive with Soto and Judge up there. 
Eighth inning, Sedan Rafael hits a home run that felt pro- honestly as big as Rafi's to me because it it did not feel like one run was going to be enough to win the game. Obviously, it did end up being enough, but it didn't feel like it. And then Rafi in the top of the ninth gets booed stepping up to the plate just because he's owned them so much and then proceeds to hit a ball that was about three and a half baseball lengths off the plate, pulling it for a home run. I don't, I've never in my life seen a home run like that. Yeah, that was, I was giving the, uh, you always see something new in baseball speech the other day. And that, I mean, that's proof right there. I've never seen, I've seen people hit, pitches that are that far out of the strike zone like Pablo Sandoval when he was actually good on the Giants would do that a lot but I've never seen someone hit a pitch like that for a home run and he also pulled it so that was six inches in the right-handed batter's box and he pulled it to right center field freak quick little nugget on that home run shout out Sarah Langs that pitch that Raffi hit was one and a half feet from the center of home plate that is for those who don't know the width of home plate is 17 inches it was more than a plate off of the middle of the plate oh and he God. pulled the fucking baseball dude Good just math. loves the stadium it is uh, he loves the stadium fourth <laughs> furthest outside pitch by a lefty since Statcast. for a home run or in yeah. general homer homer but fourth Wow, that's crazy. That's and Statcast that's is 2015. So in 10 years, that's the fourth Jeez. furthest pitch outside I'm, I'm, yeah, that's been I mean, hit for a home I've run. never seen that. I've never seen a guy do that, at least watching live in a game. Had, couldn't have been a Red Sox guy because that was bananas. Maybe it's because he pulled it, why it looks so crazy. It it def- look- definitely. I hope there's someone who finds the other uh, the other three that were supposedly further off the plate because I'm curious what those looked like. If they're further than that, they, they, you're right, Sammy. There's no way it was po- any of those were pulled. No chance. Yeah. Wow. So are you guys ready uh pick an MVP? Sammy, did you are you sticking with your Masa pick? Yeah, I'm sticking with Yoshida and I'll reiterate. I think that stats wise, Devers easily the most impactful when you look at stats, but the biggest moment maybe of the season, you could argue, maybe was that Yoshida swing. I mean, you're down to your last strike, you're facing Clay Holmes, already glazed over him, nasty pitcher. And he, like you said, Gordo, that wasn't a Yankee Stadium cheapie. That was an absolute bomb. So uh, it's also Yoshida, man. He's struggled all year. We've been, uh, me in particular, I've been super hard on Yoshida. I think he's earned it for the most part, but still, we're rooting for him. And that was great to see. If he gets going, that helps the Red Sox. We're all happy. So that's my pick. I'm I'm going to go with Sedan here. So I, it's, it's interesting that two of us are going here and neither of us is picking Rafi. But Sedan comes up in the 10th inning of game one and hits the game winning home run. We have no idea how that game goes if Sedan does not hit that home run. And in the third game, hits the home run to make it 2 nothing in the eighth. We have no idea how that game goes if it's one nothing going into the eighth, if it's one nothing going into the ninth. I mean, I obviously they didn't the Yankees didn't score, so you'd hope that the Red Sox would still win, but I don't you can't know that. So Sedan had significant fingerprints on both of the wins. Obviously, he was 0 for 4 with three strikeouts in the loss, but they they lost the game. So I don't really care what he did in the loss. I care what he did in the wins. So I'm going Sedan. And Pat, feel free. If you want to take Rafi, you don't have to do a tiebreaker here because if, if you pick Rafi, we'll have Joe come in and tiebreak it. So I am going to go Rafi. And it would be incredibly easy to point at, oh, he hit three home runs this series, his thousandth hit, whatever. The ground out in the eighth inning that he barehanded, that score could change if he doesn't make that play. And that was an insane play, especially especially from Rafi Devers. Bare hands a ball that LeMayhew hits, falling away from first, throws it cross body, right on target, gets the out, gets them out of the jam. And he did everything today. He, I mean, two home runs, obviously. Great defense. He was the reason they won today. And then you factor in thousandth hit, everything else, and a good game on Friday. I'm going Rafi. True, yeah, thousandth hit. Congrats, Rafi. Yeah, congrats, Rafi. Thousandth hit off Cole. We'll... Of course, uh, we'll- We'll bring Joe his 1,000th hit off of Cole. <laughs> yeah, you guys are mistaken. It's not his 1,000th hit. It's one 1,000th hit off of Garrett Cole. <laughs> yeah, Joe, all right, Joe. You have, you, have to, you have to vote for one of the three that we picked, but I do want to quickly shout out guys like Bailey Horn and Cam Boozer 
in the first game who you don't win that first game if those guys don't come in and throw four and two thirds scoreless. Uh, Cutter Crawford in the third game isn't going to get love for the MVP, but obviously, like if you have a start like Hauk or Winkowski delivered in the first two games, you're not winning this game, even with the Raffi and Rafaela three home runs. So they're not going to get the love. Joe's got to pick Smith. one of our three. Dom Smith. Dom, Smith. Kenley. Yeah, Kenley yeah you don't win that three. if uh, if if Dom Smith doesn't extend the inning before Yoshida, that's an L. So good yep. pinch hit single up the middle. Kenley Jansen and Justin Slayton both pitched scoreless innings when you needed it to be scoreless. So shout out those guys. But Joe, who are you going with? Who's the tiebreaker here? I mean, this is I obviously it's the tightest vote that we've had pretty much the entire season because every one of those three have a case. I'll probably rule out Yoshida because at least for a series MVP, you need to have a really good series. Um, and the one moment is the biggest moment, um, but it doesn't define the series for me. I could see Sedan because his home runs were the most impactful uh, in the series. Cause when you look at the Devers home run off of Cole, it eventually turned into a blowout as for Sedan's. It was a go ahead uh, on the third game. It was some insurance, but I think Pat sold me on Devers. I think Pat sold me on Devers in this game in particular. He wins that game by himself, both with his bat and with the fielding uh, when Slayton was really, really struggling. And I texted it to you guys in the group. Remember when Devers was a liability on defense? He's not that case anymore. So I think this sort of cements Devers as the exact right guy you want to be that power bat in your lineup. So I'm going to agree with Pat, and I'm going to choose Rafi Devers to break the tie. A tight race, a tiebreaker from Big Brave Dog, but Rafi Devers taking home the series MVP against the Yankees. It is fitting that their daddy does take home the MVP. I mean, you could make a case for any of them, but shout out Rafi. Uh, we do have to preview this series against the A's, but before we do that, we had some all-stars announced today, so I do want to Give a give all of us a chance to give some Yo, takes on that. What about our scores? What about our scores? Scores. See our crystal bomb. Some credit. We're not there yet. Oh come on! I want to get to it. You'll get there. You'll get there. I'm talking. So we'll, we'll preview the series after the All Stars. All right. All right. All right. All right. He's he's getting points. He's a little over anxious here. I'm fired it's up ridiculous. for this. He's he is gaining <laughs> ground on me in the uh in the crystal bomb. Oh my god! You guys see that light flicker? What was that? Did you just have lightning or did your light malfunction? Heat no. lightning? I think Marissa was trying to plug something in and she like unplugged the light in the process by mistake. But Sox have three all-stars. Hauk, Devers, Duran all made it. I think we all expected that. Um, so obviously huge congrats to them. It was really fun getting to hear Jaron Duran talk, not just to the media, but on the ESPN broadcast about uh, making the all-star team and hearing Tanner Hauk talk about all the ups and downs it took him to get there. So those were really cool. But also, Kenley Jansen and Connor Wong, both not making the team. I'm curious. It's my my opinion changed on this just because like I feel like I at one point I was very on board the Connor Wong all-star train. But since that time, he kind of I don't want to say he tailed because he still played fine, but it's just it hasn't been quite as good. Kenley Jansen, meanwhile, has been so locked down. I really thought he was going to make it. And seeing Clay Holmes make it over him was really surprising to me. I don't know how you guys feel about that. If you're, which one are you more upset about, Wong or Jansen? Who's the bigger snub, Kenley? The bigger snub is Kenley, but I'm more upset about Wong just because I, I really thought he was going to make it. He still might with the with the replacements, but I was looking down the list. Ohapi's the only angel to make it, right? Ohapi uh, did, make did it. he make it? He didn't make it, didn't he? No, I thought Ohapi. Who's the catchers, second catcher? Adley and Salvador Perez. Yeah. Oh, I figured it was going to be Ohapi. And then David Fry made it, but not as a catcher. Who the f he f Are you kidding me? Yeah, he made David it as Fry. Right he made it as and a DH. Or DH. Oh, my God. Dude, okay. Salvador Perez, I get it. It's the all-star game. I think he should. I would pick him over Wong just because he's like a, a relatively historic player. And this might be well, then it. There you him. go. So, you know, I'm happy for him there. But like, can he even do, do the Royals really want him catching? Just have him hit and call it a day. I still think Wong should make it. I, I thought that Ohapi had made it based on our conversation. So I guess he didn't make it. So I, I still would think Wong should be the second catcher. I think he's having a better season than Sal. I think he's having a better season than Fry, who's a DH now, whatever. Um, I don't think he's better than Adley, of course. Adley's obviously the best catcher in the game. But Wong is like, he's still hitting. 
His numbers are still great. I, it, it bums me out. I really thought he was going to make it. I feel like Kenley's the bigger snub just because I think there's a really ob- like I think one you can make the argument over Sal, but there's a lot of stats that support Sal. Like he, all of the counting stats support Sal. He's played more games, so obviously it's going to be like that. But yeah. Kenley Jansen over Clay Holmes feels obvious to me. I feel like it's also just kind of a respect thing. Like when Kenley Jansen goes up against someone for a spot like that, I feel like you just give it to the future Hall of Famer because he is that guy and he's earned it. Maybe that's just a me opinion. I don't know if people agree with that. Has Clay Holmes, he's been an all-star before, right? I think last year. So, yeah, it's not even like this guy would be getting his first all-star nod. I'd feel some sympathy there. But anything else in the all-star game before we uh, preview the series? Yeah, no, I, I'm with you. I think I, Wong I'm more upset about. But yeah, Kenley, I can't believe he didn't make it. His ERA is like, it's it's almost below two at this point. 2.01 now. And he's yeah. blown one save all year. So. And then another guy who made it, uh, Kirby Yates. He's been really good, though, Pat. He has, he has below been one. very, very good. He has a sub one. Yeah, he's gonna crazy. Start. He has a point eight six. Who's going to start, pitcher-wise? Okay, yeah, yeah. Give give your give your predictions. I'll give you the ones I gave on radio today. I think it's going to be Scooble, and then I I think I don't think he deserves it, but I think they're gonna they're gonna try to go the marketing route and start Skeens, even though I will say again I don't think he deserves it. I don't even think he deserves to be an All Star. He started ten. He started ten games. Have you seen his numbers, Gordo? Yeah, they're crazy, but it's ten games. The All Star game is also stupid. So I mean, like, if it's a marketing thing, I think it's good good for baseball to have skins in. If it's a meritocracy, I agree with Gordo. If it's a fun marketing thing, I agree with Pat. You're you're both right. How great! I agree. Is that? No, no, no. It's good for the game that he's there. Very um, good. I'm, for going, the game. I'm going Scooball. He's got a 2.37 ERA. He's one of the best pitchers in baseball. He strikes. He struck out 13 Reds today as we're recording on Sunday. So, uh, Scooball, I think it's uh, close to a no brainer. But two weeks ago, I would have said how he had it. Just had a little bit of a a little bit of a rough patch, but he's still on the starts. roster, which is awesome to see. And crazy because he wasn't even supposed to be in the rotation. If you remember back to spring training, he was the last guy added. We were there in spring training when that was announced. He was in a great mood about it. We were kind of like, oh, I hope this works. It's worked. <laughs> we were. We yeah. were. <laughs> we were like, well, he's talented, but man, I- I'm really nervous about this. I wish they had another starter. Whew. That's why All we're right. not the pitching coach. Pat, before we preview, who's going to be the two starters? I'm going to go opposite of both of you guys. I think it's going to be Ranger Suarez in the NL. And I think it's going to be Garrett Crochet in the AL. I could see Crochet. I wow. could see that. If it's not Scooble, I think that's who it is. In the I AL. don't think that. I don't think Major League Baseball is going to reward the White Sox with giving them that. That's true. That's true. Starter. Ranger it's- Suarez is interesting, man. He the, the issue with him is he doesn't pitch many innings. Like he's yeah. at 18 games, 108 innings. Hmm. That is mm. interesting. Yeah. All right. Let's let us let us get into this preview here. The A's, they stink. You know that. They're 34 and 58. They just dropped two or three to the Orioles. They did one win four or five coming into Sunday. So not necessarily the best time to face them. But guys are facing. You're facing Joey Estes, who just coming off a complete game shutout. JP Sears, who I think we all thought was a lot better than he actually is. is he's got a 474 ERA. And their TBD on the third game. But right now, it's looking like it's going to be Hogan Harris, who I don't think is a real person, but MLB doc or uh, ESPN says he's a real person uh, who has a 3 2 2 ERA. But it'll be Brian Bayo, Nick Pavetta, and Tanner Houck for the Red Sox. The only hitter you really need to know about going into the series who's had a good year is Brent Rooker, who's got an 890 OPS with 18 bombs. No one else has an OPS over 738. JJ Blade, JJ Blade has been solid. Miguel Andujar has been solid. Zach Geloff, nowhere near as good as he was last year. Brent Rooker with an 11-28 OPS in his last 13 games. Um, Joe, real quick, can we get a standings update on the on the score or on the series predictions? Oh, I would be more than happy to, fellas, because it just got tighter in the standings race. Me and Sammy correctly predicted the Sox to win two out of three. Pat predicted Pat and Gordo, I should say, predicted a sweep and we're both wrong. So that means the standings have Sammy still in the lead with 10 points. And then it's a three way tie for second. Myself, Pat and Gordo all have five points. All right. I'll, I'm going to kick it off here. I, I 
it, it would be easy to pick a sweep, but I'm going to say Sox two out of three. I think they win the first and the third game. I think they lose the middle game against the lefty JP Sears. So that's the Pavetta start. So that, that's what I'll go with. Uh, Sammy, you got it right here. I'll let you go next. I'm thinking the Red Sox sweep. Haven't picked a sweep in a minute. Uh, the A's, I know they're hot right now, but now they're coming to Fenway. The Red Sox are feeling good. Off day tomorrow. I'm not sure if the A's have an off day as well. Uh, I, oh, they have to. They will, yeah. Sunday. So both teams are going to be fresh, though. If we're taking the bullpens, I think Red Sox, other than maybe Mason Miller, just blow these guys away. The offense, not even close. Defense, even the Red Sox are better at defense than the A's, which Red Sox aren't the best defensive team. So that says a lot. Yeah, you got just 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 sweep these guys, please. And no, no losses. Just sweep. Pat, you going sweep? I am going sweep. Yeah, Sox have been red hot for the past what month, month and a half. The A's are the A's. They're playing great. The Sox playing great baseball right now, riding high off a two out of three from the Yankees. I'm taking them to sweep. Do you keep in Joe? mind though, the A's have won nine World Series, so mm-hmm. big deal mm-hmm. if you beat them. Nine so Joe, Joe Ricky is, taking, is a free agent. Joe is taking A's two out of three in that case. No, Joe is taking a sweep here. I've gotten two series prediction in a row, looking for three, and uh, just following the leader here. All right, so I'm the only one not picking a sweep, so we'll mark it down. You a hater. You a I, hater. Yeah, me with two out of three. I'm the hater here. It's true. I am the hater of this podcast. Pat, what's the time for? for you, Gordo. It could be bad, dude. If you don't get this, and then we all gain a game on you. I know. It could be. It could be bad. Or great. All right. Sorry. Go ahead. Crystal bomb. Bomb it. Bomb it. Joe, quick update, friend. Uh, it will be a very quick update because only one person Death. got a point, and that was Sammy. Sammy correctly predicted Raffy Devers, and to the surprise of no one, he went deep multiple times. Pat, you went with Thick Willie. Still continues to struggle. Uh, Gordo went with Jaron Duran, surprisingly uh, struggling in the series. And I went for the wild card of David Hamilton, not even close. So it's still Gordo in the lead with 13. Sammy's close, though. He's got 11. Pat's in third with five. And then me still in the basement with two. Did Hamilton hit one to the warning track? I think he was actually close. He he, He did hit one. He hit one that off the bat, it felt like it could go. And he had a... A deep foul ball at some point in the third game. Yeah, late in that game, I remember. Yeah, you you were you were close, Joe. He made some hard contact. It's Yankee Stadium. Let's keep that in mind. Yeah, hey, close is close. <laughs> All right, Pat. I'll let, pick the order, Pat. You, I don't want to. I don't want to cheat. I'm gonna make Sammy go last. Joe, why don't you kick us off? Ooh, okay. Um, let's see. Oakland. I mean, I could predict the whole lineup to go by. Crystal bomb, but uh, I'm gonna go with Tyler O'Neill. I think I- I'm waiting for him to really crank one and just launch it. Absolutely launch it. It's been a while, so I'll go with Tyler O'Neill. I like it. I like it. I think he's due. Gordo, I was gonna take Tyler O'Neill. There's a couple lefties on the mound here, so since I will not take Tyler O'Neill now, I will take Sedan Rafaela. Give me a right handed batter, uh, hit a couple homers in the Yankee series. So, yeah, I like that pick. All right. I'm going crazy. I'm taking Dom Smith. He's been red hot at the plate. I I'm going Dom Smith. Shout out Dom. I not love that Dom. crazy. I would say Dom's Dom is chill as fuck. I love Dom. Yeah, he's he's nice. Um. Oh man, this is tough. This is tough. I was gonna go with Sedan, but he's been taken. I don't like doing the repeat. All right, all right. So we got there's a lefty confirmed on the mound in the. Third game? Uh, not confirmed in the third game. The, it's okay, the confirmed ready, game. confirmed lefty, TBD, but looking like a lefty. Ugh. Okay. I'm going to go with William Abreu. I think Thick Willie clicks. I think he ends his slump. I think he finally gets off the schneid. He gets an off day tomorrow. Clear his head. Probably gets an off day in the middle game. But he played the third game. I think Thick Willie cranks one out of here and that's the the start of his second hot streak of the season so give me thick willy for a bomb get thick willy a day off on monday and get him get him back on the on the on the horse on tuesday i like it yeah, he's fine he's fine don't worry yeah, about it. He'll, he'll be all right he's been ice cold lately i'm i'm not 
too concerned, but it's definitely something to watch. But <laughs> Sammy, carry us home, baby. What's the next segment? So, hi, we ain't the Yankees. We're the Red Sox. We're winners, not losers. So we're going to play a game called Guys Being Dudes. Oh, yeah. All right. We've had Oakland already, so we got to get creative. No, uh, no Jamile Weeks again. Gordo, I know you love him. So no Jamile. No Rajai. We've done that. Ah. So let's uh, let's get creative. I think you did Jamile for like an Orioles series or something, actually. But still, he counts for A's. We're not doing him. Uh, anyone else I want to ban? No Yaxel Rios, because I did him last time. Let's Crazy. go with Pat. Who you got? I'm going to describe this guy. And I think you're going to think of a different outfielder, but we'll see how this goes. Played for the Athletics and the Red Sox. Outfielder, World Series champion. Coco you Crisp. thought Coco Crisp. <clears throat> Bobby Kilty. Ah, knew it wasn't going to be Coco, because that would be too obvious. Bobby Kilty. Sox legend. 2007. Game four. I like that. Mine is... Mm, I don't know if he's a World Series champion or not, actually. But I do know that he hit a home run on opening day in Japan and mm -hmm. was shipped out of Boston in the Manny trade. He had five 20-plus home run seasons after the Red Sox traded him in the Manny trade. Does anyone know who it is? Oh, no. Yes, Josh, Josh Reddick? Reddick, not Josh Reddick. He no, was Brandon Moss. Traded. Yes, Brandon there you go, Moss. Joe. It's okay. Brandon Moss. Brandon Moss. Surprise. Wow. Wait, did we just pick two gingers right there back to back? Yes. Wow. It's the first time. All right, Sammy, you better take a third. Go Deekman. Oh, did there any? Are there any? <laughs> <laughs> look at Pat's eyes. I went, I went to go look to see if I could get another. Ginger. No, I'm not going ginger. I'm going with. Marcelo Meyer acquirer helper Andrew Triggs, famous for his time with the 20, uh, 20 Red Sox. Uh, let me let me paint the picture for you. But first of all, he pitched for Oakland for uh, three seasons. It looks like four and a half ERA. So he wasn't he great, wasn't but he wasn't like wasn't like a disaster. He was just like a meh, below average reliever. But twenty twenty, he pitched. 0.1 innings with the San Francisco Giants gave up three runs, which made his ERA 81. So you know what the Red Sox said? They said, we want that guy. So the Red Sox bring him to town and he pitches eight beautiful innings, 4.50 ERA, kind of the same guy he was in, uh, in Oakland, but he wasn't great. And that season is the reason that the Red Sox have Marcelo Meyer absolutely cooking in double A. Thank God for the 2020 Red Sox. There he is. Big Triggs. Pretty cool name, actually. Andrew Triggs reminds me of uh, MMA legend Frank Trigg. Shout out. Uh, but yeah, that's my guy, Andrew Triggs. Uh, one of the least memorable guys I could possibly think of. And that is absolutely the spirit of this segment. Uh, sorry, I didn't have a ginger. I will try next time. Uh, but two out of three gingers is pretty good. That's a good one. Andrew Triggs. Yeah, legendary. Got you, Marcelo Meyer. Uh, any any last words real quick? Any Anything before I, I bring us home? Nah. Before, eh, well, quickly, looping back to the Yankees recap. Do you guys remember John Farrell? When, Do I at, when post game, he would say, yeah, he threw the ball a lot of Christmas. Yeah. Like he just had yeah. the generic answers. Aaron Boone, I believe for the third straight year, just conference amid a Yankees losing streak. And for the third straight year, just said, it's all right in front of us. We have to go grab it. He said it again today. He said it again. He's not oh. when he slammed his hands on the desk. Yes. It's all yep. right in front of us. I, man, I, I said this last week. I feel like Boone is like kind of cool. Like, nah, he's whatever. I feel like he's kind of cool. Crazy. Like, ah, Crazy. Ah. I'd have a beer with him. Yeah. I'd have a I would beer do. with him. AC and him are tight, which, yeah, whatever. I like that note, but. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Episode 92 of Play Tessie. Thank you for tuning in. But before you go elsewhere, remember, hit the subscribe button. Apple, Spotify, Odyssey app, wherever you're listening. Click the subscribe button and rate us five stars. We really appreciate when you guys do that, and it helps us out a ton. Also, check us out on YouTube. We are on the WEI page. You can find the Play Tessie playlist and hit the thumbs up on those videos, which we also love. Follow us on the socials at Play, Play Tessie on Twitter and Instagram. We appreciate you guys tuning in for Sammy, for Pat, for Joe producing. It's Gordo here for Play Tessie, episode 92. Peace.